following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chaffin here on this Monday, July the 1st. Wow, starting the second part of the year. Now, let's just put it this way. You've got um, something that's happening here that hasn't happened before and politically. Therefore, you have to look at the market and you have to look at what is the market's response to that. Well, the market's response at this particular time is uh, one where it says that um, if the market perceives that there is some light at the end of the tunnel, just in terms of ec the economy, uh, that does relieve some pressure. That doesn't mean to say everything's good. It just means hey, it relieves a little bit of pressure. The other thing that we're looking at is there's been a bifurcation in this market and it's been a real split personality. You've got, now let's go through all these different things. So I wanted to show you a very interesting pattern. First of all, you've got this peak D in the uh, Dow, uh, sorry, in the SMHs at 279.57, the high of the 20th of June, and you've kind of stalled. That's what we've been anticipating. We're also anticipating that there's a chance that that money will go into other areas. So what we're looking at right now is that you've got the Dow screaming to the upside of 194 was up way higher before it hit that uh, trend line resistance uh, right there um, that is at 39 uh, what is the high 39,438 it's now 39,308 uh, coming back a little bit from that it's up 186 but wait a minute there's a technique I just I wasn't able to get my CD introducing these uh, it's kind of not out of print but it's uh, a little redundant in its methodology being that it is a CD and people these days, some of the laptops and some of the computers don't even have a place for a CD. However, what we're looking at is there's a technique that I've discussed for years. There's the, the Chapman Wave Rogue Wave. That's where the price is coming down, coming down, coming down. All the technicals are weak. And then there's just this sudden, uh, usually it's a news event, that gets the price to spike to a, to a new recovery high. Usually it's an all-time high or it's at least a multi-month high. And then what happens is those people that were correct in shorting because it's been going down, the technicals were weak, say, whoa, what happened? Oh, I knew this is a great stock. What was I thinking? How could I have done that? And then I'm going to cover it right here. And the people that were in it and said, I've just taken profits. How, what was I thinking? They, they add back, and the price goes just above the previous high long enough to have people change their position. And then out of the blue, within minutes, the whole thing turns around and then closes at the low of the day and then just kind of toodles along as if to say, yeah, well, you should have stayed short because this was just a, an aberration. That's a rogue wave. The, the, the rule that I had and the, the story that I had was, the sign at the beach says high tide at noon. You go down at 12.03 and you think great tide's done and now I'm going to sit on my favorite rock right at the edge and I, you put down your blankie and you got your suntan lotion, you got your dark glasses, and you got your favorite book and you're just about to sit down when splash, big wave comes and you wipe your eyes, you turn around, but the tide's going out. You don't know where it came from. That's a rogue wave. There's another pattern that says we are steadily moving to the upside, and then there's one spike that goes higher in a cup formation from the previous high, takes it out, lasts just long enough to, to have everybody either convinced that they've got to add to the long position or if they're short to cover, and then the thing turns around and closes at the low of the day. Well, we almost got that. That's called a right arm extension. You know that, little, that icon that you look with the right hand is up waving to say, me, me, me. Well, that's the right arm extension. Well, the question is, and one of the reasons why um, 
we remained with our short positions in the S&P over the weekend, even though there's another index that I think is starting to really improve, and I'd like to have some participation there. Um, here it is. So here you are, peak D at, uh, let me just type this in so that I've got it, 5505.53 was on the 20th of May. So let me just change that and add 520 of May. And then what happens on Friday, it goes above that level. You remember it opened up, the futures opened up, it was really very powerful. Bam, 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 goes to the upside. And what happens? is on Friday the 28th, it goes to 55.28.64. 55.28.64. And that was on the uh, 6.28. I'm putting that in, I'll, I'll make it light because we have no confirmation yet that we've made any kind of a top. There it is, a little, that's light like that. And what do we have, look, the price is above the nine period moving average. It's just underneath it as we speak right now with the S&P down five after being up 15 or something like that. And now the Dow's only up 125. But look what happened. On the 20th, the MACD was good. The stochastic was fabulous up in the, uh, I think it was 88 or 90% area. The unbalanced volume had just made a high and was dipping down. The relative strength made a high and was just starting to dip to the downside. But that nine period moving average was fantastic. It was holding beautifully. And that said, there was enough strength to go a little higher, which it did. And now it's suddenly reversed. And what do we have? We have an almost an inverted Chapman wave red Roman candle, which says at a high, if that, if you, the very next session or within two sessions, there's a trade that lasts for about in a shorter time frame. In this case, make it a 120-minute chart. If it lasts for 90 minutes above 55.07, there's a real good chance we test the high. If we take out the low, in this case, the low on Friday was 54.11.12, and uh, the low so far today is 54.52. 50, yeah, 52. Um, point 65, um, that, mean, that would mean that there's a good chance that we're going to go down a little bit longer because this is what I call when the technicals, at least one of the technicals confirm the rally to this new high, as it worms its way to the upside, unlike when it was making lower lows and lower highs, if it suddenly spiked and made that high, that would be a rogue wave. This is not. This is, in fact, a move to the upside that essentially says, I didn't have the veracity. It was almost a news-related move. And now I'm going to see what happens the following session. In this case, now we're down 11. So that's one of the reasons why I was satisfied that we should hold, the, although I did tighten the stop on the three times aggressive, three times small position of a three times short S&P. You see this doji candle from last week in the weekly chart of the S&P? That's something that I have to monitor. So within that context, what I'm going to say is, this is a work in progress. Usually the week of uh, going to July the 4th, there are a couple of really good days. I don't know, so far it started off okay in the Dow, and now the Dow's only up 75. I'll be back because I want to show you the exact same thing in the other indices. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, so we're back, and the Dow is up 87. As we come back a little bit from that sharp pullback, it's down four. So I just want you to mention a couple of things, because this is all part of starting the second half of the year, starting the next week, starting the next month starting the second half, of the, as I say, second half of the year. But more importantly, looking at this as a transition period, just in this interim, going from June into July. Um, and that puts me into that area that says the SMHs, the semiconductors, should be pulling back um, and digesting the gains. Where will that money go to? It won't go straight from one really... Um, leading area in the tech sector into something that is quite conservative. It'll go into something that is maybe secondary or third um, in, in that list of uh, what we'll be looking at in terms of sector rotation. More importantly, um, I discussed this, you know, I spent a little, I, I know I specifically mentioned it twice <clears throat> over the last six or eight months. And I, I I'm now looking at it more and more as so, uh, it's just uh, funny how history repeats. I would mentioned that I see a situation a little bit like um, during the presidency of Wilson, where uh, in the law, he had stroke at some point, but what happened in the last, especially the last couple of months of his presidency, his wife would open the door crack and they would have to pass the papers in that he had to sign. And so there's a lot of evidence that, that people had discussed that said she probably signed a lot of the stuff because he was incompetent. And I have no idea if this is the situation now, but I was looking at this and saying, I, I, I can see if, if there is another four years of, of actually of anyone in the 80s, the responsibility over those four years, just in terms of, um, not necessarily the, your acumen, but the speed with which you can make decisions, the speed with which you move. Um, it's just going to be very interesting. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a possibility, and I mentioned it, and I don't even know if uh, this is still uh, something that is even in should be in one's thoughts. But you know, I, it struck me as wow, 
that, you know, I mentioned that, I mentioned it in passing only because I said, I see a lot of similarities to that period. Um, at, you remember we also had the flu, uh, I think he went to 2020 or 2020, I think 2020, 1920, and he also had the flu epidemic. It just there were a lot of coincidences, and coincidences seem to exacerbate movements. Anyway, so that's done. Now what we're talking about is within the different sectors, you've got the switch. Look how the Dow was lagging, 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 and it's just had a spectacular, it's actually had a, a full peak A, peak B, peak C. It stalled at the trend line once again, but look at the diamonds. The diamonds went to a D, and now they've been digesting gains. And look at the weekly chart. I said, I'm not seeing anything negative, but I am seeing a stalling motion. And I'm saying that this U-shaped pattern right here, going to a second U with five, now it's six weeks from the low, um, and not breaking to a new high, it's just using up time, very valuable time. But you have had stocks like a Caterpillar that had a really strong move for a couple of days, and now I've given back a whole chunk, it's down seven almost at 326 deer. And I've been saying, you've got to watch these because these are your core, um, we'll call them cyclical stocks. And if they call cyclical stocks, what the heck's going on? Why aren't they leading? So I'm trying to put the package together. I'm saying just on a purely technical basis. Let's go back because I'm going to talk to you once more about the Chapman wave. This is called the right arm extension. It's different to the, to the rogue wave, which happens really suddenly. Uh, those are the prices are going down, down, down. And this is one big move that takes out everything out and goes to a new high, stalls there for just enough time for the shorts to cover, for the longs to say, oh, I should never have got out of this fantastic, whatever it is, I'm going to get back in. And the next thing you know, by the end of the bar, it's turned hugely red. Now, with that said, I just need to talk patterns. He has the falling axe formation. And there's a good chance that the Dow is trying again to move to the upside. Um, the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart has been so important and it got hit exactly this morning before that turned down. Look right there. Look how it's like a magnet. The price keeps coming back to that and testing it. And then it got repelled. Now we'll see whether or not that magnet line is going to hold. And if that magnet line can hold, then we're looking at a chance that the one minute chart can move towards, let me just move this away here. So you've got peak F in the, in the 10 minute chart, peak D in the five minute chart, the one minute chart pull back and the two, 55, 29, 200 period moving average, it needs to push quite sharply above that into the 55, 35 area. If we can do that sometime this morning, uh, then there's a good chance it retests the 55, 38 with a completely different perspective. Uh, it could be now a move to the upside. All right, so I need to go back here to the, um, I just need to do this quickly. Oh, I'm going to go here. 220. Uh, give me a moment. Yeah, I think I can do that. All right. So within that context, I want you to go to the uh, the next thing, which is the QQQ. So the QQQ, the three Qs, that's the index 100 trading vehicle, um, did the same thing. It went all the way to 486.88 on the 17th, I believe it was the 17th. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the 17th of, uh, of May, I'm oh, oh, sorry, of June. And it comes all the way down, doesn't test the 200 period moving average, does a, it does break the line. And then what does it do? It starts to move up one, two bar, two bar, three bar. And then on Friday, it reverses to the upside. And what does it do? 486.86 was the high on the 17th. On the 28th, 11 days later, 11 yeah, days, it goes to 487.20. 487.20 is just a tad higher than it was on the uh, 17th. And then it turns around, creates a Chapman wave, inverted red Roman candle, and says if in the next two sessions it's able to get to and hold for 90 minutes, 484.70, then it should retest the high. If it closes underneath the low of uh, Friday, it should go down and probably test the 14 period moving average. It almost did that today of 476.43.
watching it closely. Weekly chart, a little doji candle three weeks ago, a larger doji candle on Friday with a new all-time high, and we'll see what happens this week if it's able to get above the 487.20 high of Friday. Look at the IWM. The IWM had a very sharp pullback this morning from the open. Uh, it hit 203.82. It's now down $1.49 at 201.40. Once again, it's showing that it hasn't got the temerity to, to be able to hold the gains. But I, the nine period moving average is getting really close to attempting to cross positive and go green. And I, I'm, I'm kind of in favor of this uh, index at the moment in terms of looking at it as where money possibly could go to, but absolutely buy. By Wednesday afternoon, certainly by Friday, it needs to be back at the two, yes, the 250, 204 level. It's going to be. I'll be back in a moment to finish some of those things about the, uh, the climb that's called right arm extension in the Champion methodology. Dow's up If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technicians Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. 
Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Before I go on, I just had a question about Pfizer. Pfizer was once trading up in the uh, 60s, came all the way back down to the 25s. Had a really nice, if you look at now, if you're looking at the week monthly chart, you know, I've got the pattern that I call the arch formation, left side, right side, price, time match, and the Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line. See this dash pink line? Well, it went, it took a little longer, it went underneath the left side low in the 26 area from 2020, and then uh, it started to form a base, and it's got this base in the monthly chart that says, I am forming the right kind of candles that say the support level in the 26 to 25 area should hold. I haven't yet developed the kind of upside potential to go above the pink nine period moving average in the monthly chart, which is at about 29.30, to try to get to the 30.91 area where the 14 period exponential moving average is. Therefore, it's a process, and the process says the shorter time frames have to leave. So let's look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart on Pfizer, PFE, symbol trading at up 54, 28.52, says that uh, it's the nine period moving average went green for a while. It did pull back quite sharply from 29 to the 26s. It's trading right now at 28.52. MACD's good, stochastic, very weak at 60%. Uh, on balance volume is good. The nine is holding well above the 14, and that's a good sign. Then you come to the um, to the daily, and it had a high level consolidation. And that consolidation says it's still pink in the nine period moving average, but it's got a really nice move up 53 cents today. Uh, what would it take to get that green? It won't take much. It's at 28.51. And what I'm looking at, the way it's filled the gap from uh, early June uh, in the 28th, the way it's filled it uh, today says that that's a starter position. It's in leg C. I would like to say that this is in a buy mode because it's in leg C, but that stochastic is still at 47%. So I have to get, wait wait a day, maybe even two days to really confirm and uh, to say that I can put an up arrow to say it's in a buy mode. So I'm calling it right, right now. I'm calling it, I'm calling it a very good cup formation turnaround. Uh, it has the potential, and it's also in a sector that says, you know, this sector could be uh, independent of general market action. Uh, it was a fantastic company. It's not like Lilly. Let me just show you the difference. Look, Lilly, right here, trading, having made all-time highs over and over and over again over the last month. And even now, EF could be uh, even an instant restart uh, in the daily leg E. This is the best one. This is like when you choose between J.P. Morgan or what, or what we have, which is Bank of America saying it's a laggard, but it has all the ingredients that could make it a really powerful move to the upside. So instead of going for the leader, we chose to go back into Bank of America. This could be the same thing that uh, Eli Lilly uh, is the leader, but in fact playing catch up with a potential for a really nice gain is something like a Pfizer. So how would that work? That would work if the 27s over the all of this week, if 27 becomes a really key support level, and the low today is 27.94, so if that holds, as if it goes under 27.50, I would say no. I said 27. I shouldn't have said that. I should have said above 27.70. If it goes under 27.50, it's going to keep going sideways. So this is a very important moment in Pfizer's uh, life cycle in terms of the daily chart. The weekly chart is just steadily moving higher. That's good. Monthly chart, as I say, is just in a sharp down move. So if you're in it, I'm going to say that's this is the moment that if you're going to be in Pfizer, it's going to give you a lot of information. And that information says if by any time this week, by Friday, but any time this week, I think Friday is a half, I hope it's a half session, um, if on Friday there's been a push above the candle, this is a chamber we've inverted Roman candle from the 7th of June, I'm going to say that it opened at 28.75, right, and then it closed down, 28.75, yes, there we go. 
if there is a, a touch of the 2837 area, uh, sorry, I didn't mean 287, it's a 2847, 2937 area, and today's high is 2863, that's going to be a good sign because it raises the base of support. And if there's a close above 2850 this week, I keep saying 28, 2950, that's going to be really good action. So you want to see the high 28s touched? You want to see a close, in, I would even say above 29. And that's going to say you've got your cup formation, it's raised the base of support, and you want to go one step at a time because from Friday, you want to then look at it the following week, what's happened, because this is another uh, candle there where if it's able for a whole day to be able to, to um, hold and preferably close above 29, 29, 20. That really helps that weekly chart say, you know what, I think it's going to go to a leg C, and then it will be above uh, 29, say 72. So there we are. All right, that's that's a little analysis on that. Uh, let's see, a question about <coughs> FXI. FXI is the uh, China large caps uh, shares. This is almost like Pfizer's monthly chart, really a huge decline from the 5433 area in February of 2021 down to the 20 double bottom of 2087 and 2086. And it's just doing nothing. Weekly chart doing nothing. And daily charts making lower lows and lower highs. And that's the thing I was warning about that I think that most of the move to the upside is done just for now. It needs another little bit of time for a breather. Not so much price. 2574 to 2611. A close below 25 says it needs more time and price. In this case, it's using more time over the last two, three weeks. It is time and price when you think it was up at 29 and a half, and now it's at 26.11, uh, but I'm just looking at it over the last uh, week or two. Next thing we want to look at, oh, a Tesla, Tesla right here. Sharp move to the upside. This is a breakout. Remember the 200 period moving average? I was saying <clears throat> if it does break and closes close twice above the arch high of 185, <clears throat> that's going to be very important, and especially if it's in leg D. And yeah, you've got another big move to the upside. I, I would just suggest shorting Tesla. Is, it's a tough proposition because he always comes up with something. And look, Stochastic's at 77%. Uh, on balance volume is good. Uh, the MACD is good. I have no choice to, but to say the weekly chart is now in a buy mode. In leg C, it should go to a D. <coughs> Monthly chart is not too great, but that's how I'm looking at it. Okay, let's finish this up. We've got gold. <coughs> Gold is now down nine. It tried to rally, it couldn't hold it, but it's not breaking down, it's just breaking. It's the, the price right now. Ricky Charles says, yep, it's just kind of stuck. Nine is good, over the 40, it's just not going anywhere. Uh, let's look at the GDX as we go to the break. GDX is down a little bit at 33.93. It's unchanged. This is steady, but it's, it's in a resistance. I'll be back, Dow's down, oh, Dow's down 13, SP's down 14. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. 
Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so we're back and we're looking at GDX in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It just can't get above it. It, it tries to hold, so it can get above it, but it can't hold above it. So the weekly chart says, hey, just a sideways move. If you're looking at silver, Silver continuous contract, same sort of thing. It's down just 0.08 at 29.47. It's stuck in this down channel with lower lows and lower highs, but it's not breaking down. And that's really important. I've been talking about this for some time. It, both silver and gold are using time rather than price. Considering what the dollar did, it's impressive that they're both held. But I think they're holding more for geopolitical reasons than anything else. <clears throat> um, this is just my, my assumption. And the dollar is holding well because it is the currency of favor at this particular time. But it's not great. It's really not doing. I mean, if you look at that uh, monthly chart, it's been in this range uh, for over two years. <clears throat> and that just says it's not really showing strength, but it's showing strength in the fact that it's not breaking down. That just means it's holding well. It's kind of a, a place of, of comfort for very big countries, institutions. This is where the money goes in the currencies, and gold is where the money goes when there's geopolitical hesitation. And right now, it seems to be easing just a little bit, but it's really uncertain. So therefore, it's holding the weekly chart says gold is holding well. Uh, High-grade copper is uh, up today, I think. Yep, up a little bit, up 0.01 at 440, but it's really not doing well. Wood, which is really important. I showed my subscribers to my opening call. Every weekend, I do about an hour-long webinar, uh, sorry, a, web a video. An hour long video, market overview, what we're looking at and why we're looking at it. So, within that context, uh, <clears throat> the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF is holding well, but it's starting to pull back and it's gone from the 85s to the 77s. It's trading right now at 78.55. Now, it's just in this consolidation, and that kind of sums up, the, I guess, world economies, I'm not sure, together with high grade copper. But it does tell us that there's been a slowing down uh, at this particular point. That's what we're looking at. So IYT is the transportation index. Uh, it's holding so many uh, of these indices and some of the charts are holding well. They're not breaking down. They're not breaking up, <clears throat> holding well. Now, I need to go through this. So did I finish everything? So let me show you, just show you the dollar making a peak E the other day, double top. Pull back a little bit at 105.69, down 18 cents. But the weekly chart says, hey, you're just holding very well. Look at the EUR. This is the EUR USD, the currency pair. Big pop and it pulls back today. It's in the sideways range. Look at the USD, JPY. This is the yen, the, the Japanese yen dollar currency pair. New all time high. <clears throat> Actually, I always forget to say this because I'm looking at the price. I'm looking at the price. This height in the yen looks fantastic. Unfortunately, it has the exact opposite effect in reality because it means the yen is weak. 
It's strong in price, but as a currency, it means that uh, it's not doing that well. <laughs> so what can I say? US dollar, Japanese yen, all time high. Um, and here we are at uh, 161.57. I heard a lot of people over the last two weeks saying, yep, that's the end. I, I don't see it just yet. And look, the stochastics flat at 97% in the daily, at 91% in the weekly, and 94% in the monthly. It's going to take something that really knocks the dollar down sharply to get the yen to come down together, because they usually move um, in chart-wise, they move in parallel motion, not the same percentages, but kind of together. Uh, um, okay. Um, Yes, so the question came in, where was it? If I could look at, oh, I know. Um, I'd mentioned Microsoft. So I did the Chapman Wave right arm extension, which says, yeah, just be careful. You've got a little bit of a pullback coming back. If you've got, it's not a rogue wave, it's something different, but it says you're overbought, meaning the price has gone higher. Not all the technicals are confirming, so there has to be a little bit of a digestive phase. And I think that's what we're looking at, certainly in the S&P, and the QQQ, which had that U-shaped formation with the higher right side. But the semiconductors are now down, um, down 2.42, making the H pattern, the dreaded H. Um, so that, in fact, says that you got to be prepared for some kind of weakness. Now, I needed to go to, I think, what was the question? Oops, let me see where it is here. It was in the Tiger Den. Uh, thank God it, got it, got it. Uh, yep, and there. Oh, uh, so Wednesday is a half day, is it? And then Friday is a full day. <laughs> Friday is a full day. All right, well, it's a full day. Um, so now I need to do something that I've been talking about for about a week. I've been saying, what on earth is going on with the yields? The yields made a high at the 94, 60-ish area. That's the TLT. It's now at 90.06, four points in the shortest period of time. To the downside, the weekly chart, this is Monday. When I see an S, that means the nine period moving average has gone negative under the 14 period moving average has changed to pink from green. That's I can talk about it as much as I want. This is Monday. It's the first hour and a quarter of the trading session. I have to wait for Friday at four o'clock before I can talk about it. So we'll see if this S remains because it remains all week. It says, watch out, because that monthly chart is showing no strength at all. It says that the TBT, which is the direction of the yields uh, right now, has had a big spike to leg B, and it should go to a leg D if this is going to work in the Chapman methodology of buy signals that go to buy modes invariably. I don't mean just invariably. I mean 90-something percent of the time go to at least a peak D. And that's when you can do your analysis and see what else is going to happen. And that just says, on a weekly basis, if the TBT, that's the Lehman Ultra Short 20 Year Treasury Bond ETF, closes above 36.64. That's actually 3.664. Uh, and it's at 35.60 right now per dollar 14. This week on Friday, that is going to have a little bit of a debilitating effect on the Dow. Dow's now on the market. Dow's down 70. It was up hundreds before. And the S&P is now down eight. And as I said, I thought that the IWM, the Russell 2000, don't get carried away with the Russell. It needs to prove itself. It's at 200.93 right now. It's a way deeper move than I anticipated. Um, but I do believe that the weekly is saying, Money is starting to come into this area, but that doesn't mean to say that the price is going to respond until you actually see the price going into the 205.80, 206.30 area. And I'm going to give it at least the first two weeks of July to do that. Okay, next question I had. Oh, XLF. X, oh, no, 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 Bitcoin. Let's just do these uh, one at a time. Bitcoin is trading up 2,825 at 63,159. I had said, a couple of weeks ago, actually, that I had a sell signal that was upgraded to a sell mode when it had the double top uh, about four weeks ago and started to pull back. And that just says to me that Bitcoin is going to use time rather than price.
to digest these huge gains. And then it should try for a leg D. And that should be in the 70, uh, 77,000 area. But at this particular point, it's digesting. Now it's down. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I forgot to mention earlier on, I saw it, but then I just, I was so busy with other things that I forgot to mention it, that this candle right here, this candle at 1030, was it 1020? 1020? That's Chabri Roman candle. And it says that in a shorter time frame, if it starts trading uh, below the halfway marker of the long wick, which would be at 55.15, then you've got to be careful because there's a real good chance that you go towards and probably test the low of the, this bar. And that would be the low of uh, right here at 55.06, I think it was, at uh, 55.05.50. So you just got to be careful there. So let me go through this one more time. This is a technique that I, I meant to, in my overview on uh, the weekend, for some reason, I just, I, I missed it until as it finished. And as it finished, I said, oh my goodness, I could have spent the whole hour uh, talking about this particular pattern and let's see how it plays out. That's this Chapman Wave right arm extension with an uh, inverted red uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle right there. So we've gone to the bottom now. This is that candle, you see, because I'm measuring the 20th of May S&P higher 5505. 
and the 5528.64 high of Friday with that candle. And it just says, be careful, because now you can have a little bit of a pullback and you can have a digestive phase um, if it closes underneath the low of Friday. And so far, it kind of looks like it's going to do that. And the QQQ did exactly the same thing. And it's down $1.22 and 47.93. So I'm watching this very closely. And as I said, I think that this is a phase where we're going to start to see money. You'll find out which sectors are, are, are well or which lagging stocks like we saw Lily at a high. Pfizer's trying to come off its low. Um, we're going to see whether or money goes into the laggards. I didn't do UNG. UNG is down. Look at that double top that we were talking about the other day. That double top right there in the 2150s. Look at that. Look at the technicals. How the technicals were weak on the right. And look how it's pulled back. It's down to the 1679 area. This is not national debt. Just be a little careful here and be very selective. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes and check out my opening call, my daily newsletter.